Hi, this is uh, Kevin Buzzer talking about solutions to sheet three uh, in the topology section of my Formalising Mathematics 2022 course. And normally I give you lots of small problems, but here I'm giving you one big problem. Uh, and it's to prove continuous image of compact is compact. Uh, so what's the maths proof? Uh, that's an interesting question. How do we prove continuous image of compact is compact? Uh, so the idea is we cover, so what does compact mean? It means every open cover has a finite subcover. Uh, so cover f of s uh, with, with opens ui. Uh, and then, so we need a finite subcover. And where's this finite subcover coming from? We can pull the ui back, right? Uh, you know, the, the f inverse of the ui uh, are now an open cover of s. And so, yeah, so they have a finite subcover, and uh, that would be, I guess, that would be kind of f inverse of u one, f inverse of u two, dot dot dot, f inverse of u n. You know, by renumbering our index set or whatever, and then you check that uh, u one, u two, dot dot dot, u uh, n. Uh, cover S, and so done. Uh, so that's the proof we're going to formalise. Um, and you might wonder, okay, we've got to prove that we've got to prove that this is compact. So how do, how are we supposed to be starting? We're supposed to be uh, covering F S with open U I, and you might kind of think, oh, I don't know, let's try intro X, see what happens. Uh, and then you discover, to your surprise, that X is now a filter on Y, and uh, as long as X isn't the bottom filter, the filter that Bourbaki doesn't allow, uh, if X is a, uh, a subset of a principal filter, then it must have a cluster point. Um, so there you go. That's not at all what we expected and not at all what we wanted. It turns out that uh, definitionally, <coughs> in Lean, compact is defined to be uh, something completely unrelated to, uh, uh, to what we're taught uh, in undergraduate topology courses. Uh, so what we need, we've got these assumptions that things are compact or this goal that something's compact as well. Uh, and we have to, if we're going to go through this proof that I just talked about, you know, we need to, we need to work out how to get from compact to uh, every open cover has a finite subcover. And, um, and unsurprisingly, this is a theorem in Lean. I mean, it's, it's not a definition that doesn't matter, right? What the actual definitions are is of no importance to mathematicians because uh, we don't care about definitional equality. We only care about equality. And uh, the concept of being compact is equal, you know, logically equivalent to the concept of every open cover having a finite subcover. Uh, and as you can see, Lean calls these things is compact. Uh, and we want if and only if. And now you can see, see there's stuff going on here. Look. Uh, so this looks good, right? If finite subcover, and then you can see down here, it says it's compact if and only if for every open cover there's a finite subcover. So that's the one we want. And we need to rewrite it everywhere. So I mean, at HS, oops, at HS under the goal. Uh, and there we go. And now our, you see now things are much more complicated. Now this basically says, now our goal is to prove that if we have a family of sets and they're all open and the image of S is contained in the union of that family, then there's a finite subset of the indexing set such that the image of S is contained uh, in the union over that subfamily. So you see that now we're back at the, I mean, the traditional mathematical definition uh, of, uh, of, uh, of compactness. So now how do we... Uh, so now, so definition of compact, use definition of compact. Uh, and now we cover FS with uh, opens UI, so we intros, uh, let's, have, let's call our capital indexing, our, our indexing set capital I. Uh, so we've got I, and then we've got U is our opens, and then we've got our hypothesis that U is open, uh, and we've got the hypothesis that use, the U's cover S, there we go. Oh, sorry, the use cover, the image of S, H-U-F-S, maybe I should call that. 
and now we've got to come up with a finite subcover. So we've got to come up with this. Uh, we've got to come up with the set, not u1 up to u, and we've got to come up with the numbers 1 to n. This is the point. We've got to come up with the precise indices of the u's which work. There. So, you know, the, the, our next slide is we want to use something. Uh, use this fin set is a finite subset of i. Fin set i is the type of finite subsets of i. Uh, so where's that finite subset coming from? Of course, it's coming from here, right? The conclusion of hs is that there exists a finite subset of i, blah, blah, blah. So when we get this finite subcover here, this finite subcover, it won't, it won't be called u1 up to un. It will be called kind of u alpha, u beta, u gamma, dot, 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 where alpha, beta, gamma are the elements of a finite subset of i. Uh, and that's the finite subset of i we need. Uh, so we need to start feeding hs now, right? So we want to specialise... Uh, uh, specialized. So we need to get to this. You see, the goal now is to get to this. We want to make HS say there exists a finite set, and then we'll use cases to get the finite sets, and and then that will be then we'll be able to use the use tactic to make progress here. Uh, so we need to specialize HS. Uh, what do we need to do? So the first thing HS wants HS is a function, right? The first thing it wants to eat uh, is a type, but that's in squiggly brackets. Those squiggly brackets means that Lean is going to guess. What that type is for us. So we don't put, if I put, like the, the, that type iota is i, right? But if I put i, I'll get an error. See, it's complaining. i is, I is a type, but I was expecting a function from, uh, from i to set x. You see, that's the next input. u is a function from i to set x. So what we have to give it is, uh, I guess, the function. So lambda i uh, in its f inverse of ui, right? Uh, f inverse of ui. There, and that hasn't worked. Oh, it's because ah, uh, that's group theory inverse. It's f. It's that. Uh, no, it's not. It's that. Yes, they finally got there. Uh, yeah, inverse unfortunately is reserved by a group is reserved by group theory to mean inverse of a inverse of an element of a group. So we use inverse primes to um, to pull back this. <clears throat> to pull back this uh, UI. Uh, and now HS is kind of in an irritating state because the next thing it wants to eat is a proof uh, that the pre-image, you know, that the, all these F inverse of UI are open, right? Uh, and then the, the thing after that it wants to eat is another proof as well. Uh, so it wants to eat two proofs now. It wants to eat the proof that S is a subset of the union. And once it's eaten those two proofs, uh, it'll give us the fin set we want. Uh, so I'm just going to put underscores in here uh, because now, uh, I mean, because now we've got three goals. I mean, that's just a way of, uh, it's just a way of, we don't have to name, we, don't, we now don't have to write the statement that we're trying to prove with a have and then prove it. Uh, these goals are now just in our local context. We can just put sorry here. Uh, sorry here. So we'll worry about, we'll worry about proving that um, uh, this thing here. So you see, we haven't done that yet, right? Especially F, F inverse I are an open cover of S. Uh, and so that's so that's this, right? That's that's open and that's cover. Uh, and so now and so we'll come back to those in a minute. And so now we get our finite subcover. Uh, I wonder if we can can we do this yet? I wonder if we can just cheat. Yes, we can. There we go. So um, that's interesting, isn't it? So Lean can do it from there. Uh, Lean's finish tactic, it says, well, we need a finite subset of I. Where's it coming from? Well, it's going to come from HS. Uh, so, so we have a finite subcover there, and Lean can take it from there. So that's how that works. And now we've got to prove... Uh, yeah, you see, unfortunately, now it takes a very long time. Now, writing anything. Now, you see, imagine I'm trying to prove the, pr the problem with using finish. Uh, it's because now we're going to like, right, now let's prove, now let's prove that all these things are open, right? We need, what we need here is that the pre-image of an open set is open. And finish doesn't know, finish is just shunting terms around, right? Finish doesn't know any mathematics. Finish is just saying, you know, finish is just saying, oh, you want to prove this? Maybe it follows from the hypotheses. Uh, it's not going to be using 
exotic theorems from the library, like the pre-image of an open set uh, is open if the function is continuous. So if the, the problem with using finish is that now if we start, we now for all i is open this, so let's go intro i, and now let's look at what the goal is. Wait, it still says for all i. Wait, what's going on? We've got orange bars here. Oh, it's running finish again. Oh, it's finally finished. Uh, great, so now we've got to prove that this is, is open, and now let's start doing something. Ah, the orange bars are there again. You see, every time we type something, we're triggering finish again. So I'm going to put sorry here, uh, and I'm going to comment out that finish. And now you see it's instant. Uh, so what does the goal say? You see, now we, don't, now we don't get orange bars every time we type something. We've got to prove that this thing is open. We've got to prove that the pre-image of an open set is open. Uh, so I suppose the easiest, the easiest way to do this, we could specialise... Uh, I mean, the, the statement that we could call this J, because we were constantly saying for all I, it's nice to have a J, right? Uh, now we've got to prove that f immersive of uj is open, and we know that for all I, ui is open, so we could specialise uh, hu open uh, to j. And now, uh, now we know that uj is open, we want the pre-image is open, and we know that f is continuous, and this is such a basic fact about continuous functions that it's going to be in the library, so we could find it using library search. Here we are. Uh, and it's that's not what I would have I I looked at this earlier and I found something else. Continuous dot is open pre-image we could have used. Uh, are we happy with using this? Uh, let's try let's try continuous is open pre-image. Oh, so it works as well, great. Uh, and now you kind of start wondering, well, was there any point specialising? We could just have done this, right? We could have done H U open J there. We could have got rid of that. And now we won't need the definitional simplification because dsimp only makes definitional changes and exact works up to definitional equality. Uh, so that's the proof of that. Uh, and now this one... Uh, we've got to prove, you see this one again looks quite formal, right? We know that the image of S is contained in the union. We want S is contained in some union. I'm wondering whether finish can do that one. Finish or tidy or something. And the answer is yes it can. So finish solves this one and now finish solves this one as well. Uh, and now you see it takes a long time, right? It was easier to code, uh, but it takes longer to process. But when those bars are disappearing, and I'm confident that they will, we have a proof that a continuous image of compact space is compact. Uh, so I guess that'll do, as far as I'm concerned. I'm, you know, quite. I'm sick and tired of writing proofs you know, where we intro terms and then just take things apart and then and then reassemble them in a slightly different order. So I think I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching.